When you look at monotherapy versus combination therapy, uh, could you enlighten the audience whether um, you look at a particular lesion and you're comfortable doing monotherapy with hemospray, understanding fully well that this is a new paradigm and, and all the guidelines for GI bleeding require two modalities, which we teach our fellows. Uh, so when you look at you know being satisfied with or happy with or, or content with monotherapy for a GI bleeder, is that a different type of lesion, different patient? And when you do a, a combination therapy with, with clips or epinephrine or thermal coagulation, is that a different type of lesion, different patient? I'm sure the audience would like to know what your approach is to uh, these two different platforms. Rescue therapy is separate. That's, you know, the standard therapy yeah. has failed and you go in. But So we'll leave that aside. But between combination therapy and, and monotherapy, I think that's a very valid question. I think it's a it's an important question, and I, I think in order to answer it, just take a step back and actually just look at the, some of the unique properties of of hemispray and the way that it's delivered. Um, you know, the this is a non-contact field uh, approach, so actually, um, the in, you know intuitively uh, in in a, in a in a high risk lesion like a forest one A lesion where there is a pulsatile vessel. Um, I think there is consensus that you would aim to to try and stem that with uh, with mechanical therapy. But most data show very nicely that in you know in in in, in uh, patients with forest what uh, one uh, 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 one B, but also the two ways um, that hemospray, not just in combination therapy, but there's a significant cohort of patients where it's been used in monotherapy. Uh, that it's been effective. So, um, you know, also one has to remember that a lot of these peptic ulcers, especially those the sort of D1, D2 junction, um, it is not easy to, to place a, a, a mechanical clip uh, or to, to precisely place a, uh, a, an epinephrine injection into, into the base of an ulcer in a bleeding vessel. Um, and right. hemospray can give you that bridge to then... A, Second line is combination therapy. Apply your uh, your your next line, whether that's a clip or or, or a bit of adrenaline or, or 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 some coagulation. So, I think it's very difficult to be prescriptive as to which lesion and when. Um, but you know, access sites like we say with with polyps, um, and and also experience. You know, Vivek, as we got more comfortable with this, we knew what we could get away right. with and what we couldn't get away with. Right, that's a that's a that's a fair point, and I think that uh, particularly, you know, as you know, some some of us, uh, maybe some of us who are watching tonight, use the product yet or have not used it as extensively as as you guys. Um, I think, uh, or are working in a relatively smaller setup um, where uh, you don't have access to all the accessories and, and, and hemostasis devices that one would ideally hope for. I think if you're in a bad spot and you have a difficult anatomic location, um, uh, rest assured that the data suggests that uh, hemospray might, might save the day either definitively or in a temporizing manner, depending on until you get the patient to, uh, to uh, the next level of help. Uh, so I think that's important.